So, it's a big gamble. Ed Miliband says that if Labour wins the 2015 election, it will freeze energy bills until the beginning of 2017. Perhaps, predictably, the energy companies, who also face being broken up by Labour, are united in criticism of the move. Well, our business correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy, is here. So, how would Labour do it? Well, what they're going to do, Chris, is put in place legislation that will basically make it illegal for energy firms to raise their prices any time during the 20 months from May 2015 to December 2017. Now, Labour says that the energy firms should be able to absorb that freeze because of the massive profits they've made in recent years. They certainly hope it will be popular with voters, but it wasn't popular, of course, with the energy companies themselves today. Here's a snapshot of what a couple of them said. One said it would mean that there won't be any investment now in new power stations and infrastructure. Another said that it will lead to unsustainable loss-making retail businesses. Oh, but they're making huge profits, so how do they explain that? Well, here's how they justify it. Let's take a look at the average dual fuel bill of around £1,200 a year. Now, energy firms say that only half of those costs in the bill actually are for the energy itself, while about 20% is made up of network costs, the cost of distributing energy and gas around the network. But 10% and rising of costs in bills is made up of investment that the government mandates these energy firms make to roll out new green technologies like wind and solar and also to invest in urgently needed new um, power stations. Um, so the point the energy firms are making is fine, Mr Miliband, freeze our bills, but the wholesale and network costs will continue to rise. So all it will mean over the long term is that we can no longer make the investment you require us to make in green energy, which will bring bills down in the long term. And equally, it could lead, in the worst case scenario, to blackouts because we won't have built the new power stations that are required to meet increasing demand. Uh, well, so should we believe their numbers? Are they well, right? if, well, if you look at this, it does appear to make sense. But you could also argue that these are extremely profitable companies and that in the freeze period, if you like, they could pull in profits from somewhere else to keep that investment up. There was another suggestion today that you could put the investment required onto general taxation. In other words, take it out of bills altogether. But there does appear, Chris, to be a slight contradiction here, that on the one hand, Mr Miliband is saying let's freeze these energy bills. And on the other, he's saying, at the same time, I'm going to stick to key climate change targets for 2030. But those require massive investment itself by the energy companies. So how he is making the two add up is not clear. OK, thanks, Siobhan. Well, joining me now is the Chief Executive of Energy UK, Angela Knight, and the Shadow Energy Secretary, Caroline Flint, is in Brighton. Um, Angela Knight, what does Sendrica mean by we wouldn't be able to operate? Well, I think that clearly what you need to do is look at those figures that were just put up a moment ago, which shows that actually a very small amount, interestingly, of your energy bill, something less than 20%, is actually within the uh, control of the energy company. And that is the 20% which they use to uh, run the power stations, to employ the people. A large proportion of the bill actually comes from factors that are outside the control. And so if one is looking at what the future looks like when you have actually frozen the prices, then the answer is that you're going to get some adverse consequences. And so, so your companies will just, cut investment, will they, if, if they're forced to do this, if Labour win the election? If you can't uh, charge the right price for the money that you're investing, then you can't invest in the first instances. So you won't cut, cut your profit margin? Well, your, your, your members will still take their profits uh, and they will cut investments in renewables. That's what you're saying. I think that there's actually a completely wrong story about profits. I mean, the profit that the companies make is about 5%. Well, well that is considerably but, less than most industries. But there is an argument about the opacity of the wholesale market and that some of your companies are making money from that and so this idea that you only take a tiny little margin is a bit of a con. They actually... And, and because you won't be utterly transparent about well, they do. They make energy all those, prices, they make all we, those, we don't know. They make all those numbers available to Ofgem, the regulator, who then puts it out on the websites so you can see what the sixth largest energy company makes. But don't forget that there's many more than just six. We have about 80 members. We have independent suppliers. We have independent generators. All of them will be affected by this sort of policy. But just so to be absolutely I, clear I about the consequences, to yes. put to Caroline Flint, you are saying you will not be able to deliver 
the renewables obligations and the targets if they go ahead with this? It certainly looks to us that if you're going to freeze what can be charged, then it's going to impact somewhere badly. And what, are they, what the companies are saying at the moment is that, that will invest, it, will, it will impact investment. And what we need in this country is more investment in energy, okay. and particularly to meet those targets to which the, uh, the uh, politi politicians have signed up to. Stay with us for a moment. Uh, let's go to Caroline Flint in Bryson. This is, this is politically popular, but not actually very sensible. Is, is, the, is the argument. Look, with all due respect uh, to Angela, I'm, I don't think I'm going to take any lectures from her. A few years ago, uh, Angela was representing the big banks and said they didn't do anything to cause the global financial crisis and defended LIBOR. And today she's uh, defending the big energy companies. The truth is, our figures are based on information provided to Ofgem uh, from the big six. They show to us that actually wholesale prices, which makes up you know, the, more than half the bills that we receive on our doormat. In 2009, wholesale prices for electricity dropped by 45%. Uh, customers only saw a 5% reduction in a bill and it's been out of kilter ever since. So the freeze is about stabilising the situation until we get our reforms in to tackle a dysfunctional uh, energy market that isn't competitive enough, isn't transparent enough and really has left the public um, at a loss as to how these company op companies operate and lost their trust but at the same time. Will, will your legislation force them to take the money out of their profits rather than out of investment in renewables? Because if they just Let, cut their investment in the future, you've cut your nose off to spite your face or to win an election. Well, let's be clear about the investment side. First of all, in terms of renewables, over half the investment comes from other sources that are nothing to do uh, with the big six. Secondly, uh, government is planning, and we're supporting this, uh, to provide a fixed return to generating companies for the electricity they provide so they make sure that will enable them to get the investment to invest in power station and so forth. It is just not the case that somehow our plans You're not that have been laid the out question. today by Ed Miliband I did answer the question. You would get the impression from Angela that all the investment comes from the big six. It doesn't. Over half the clean energy comes from elsewhere. Also, it's already been agreed with government that they will be given a fixed price for the energy they produce, and therefore, that will enable them to get a good return on investment. The truth is, though, we've seen investment in clean energy, in renewables, right. cut by a half in the last three years. And these companies, and let's yeah, be clear about this. but this is an admission this. that under Angela, Labour, prices Angela, went up outrageously. And, and you did it on purpose what because it was all part of the environmental strategy and you are now trashing your own climate change bill. No, 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 not at all. Look, up. the situation is this. Our bills, of our bills, over half of it is to do with wholesale prices. Wholesale prices fell and what the big six didn't do is reflect that in the bills to consumers and that is what we are tackling through market reform and they have to be accountable for that. The truth is none of us know what the true price of energy is and I'm talking about the wholesale price and that's why we're going to separate the generating arm from the supply arm and when we talk about profits I have to say it's very cute to just talk about the supply side. They make huge profits on their generating side, and at the moment they sell that power to themselves to sell on, on to us. And that is going to end with our reforms. But we only think it's fair to the public who have suffered high prices due to this discrepancy, this di distortion right. in the way the wholesale falls haven't been passed on to get a better deal. And to that end, until our reforms kick in, there will be a freeze to January An 2017. Angela Knight, just answer that. Which part? I mean, the reality is that there's been an awful lot of allegations there made and not many of them are correct. The reality that what we are facing is an industry which is investing huge sums of money and it doesn't matter whether you are one of the large companies or one of the small companies because we, uh, as an organisation, represent a very wide range of what is a very plural industry in this country and good for that. And if they're going to invest the money that we need in whatever form of energy, then you do have to make a profit. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is not whether you should take one bit or try and distort the market another way or say you don't like a particular company. We should look at the whole of the okay. energy issues and discuss it with people so they understand and we all are able to Angela have that proper, clear, open and honest discussion. Angela Knight, Caroline Flint, thank you both very much. Thank you.